The Chicago Public Schools Law Department targeted at least six principals for removal last year, and all six were black. One of the three best examples of the law department's malfeasance in conducting this inv these investigations is the case investigator Kelly Tarrant concocted against Principal Abdul Muhammad. When Muhammad was removed from his position as the rightful principal of Limbloom Math and Science Academy, he was not given any due process. They didn't even tell him what he was charged with. It wasn't until we made clear our intent to file a lawsuit that the law department released the charges and the investigative report to Muhammad. Once we got the report, we realized why they didn't want to release it. Not only are the charges in the report provably false, they are petty. And the law department knew they were petty. And we believe this because, number one, they tried to prevent the report from being released. And number two, when we forced them to release it, listen to me. We forced them with a letter sent on April 14th. Three days later, on April 17th, they got the inspector general to open up yet another investigation against Muhammad months after he'd been removed. Like the claims in the first investigation, the claim in the new investigation is provably false. Unlike the first investigation, however, the new claim was failure to report sexual misconduct. So it is not petty. So I want to focus my comments on the connection between the false claims and the petty accusations in the original investigative report and the false claim and serious accusations at the heart of the new investigation. Please listen closely. CPS's own Aspen report shows that a young female student was sexually harassed on three different occasions by an adult male security guard. This is in your report. And she reported this harassment to at least four different Limbloom staff members. And three of the four staff members failed to call DCFS, failed to call the OIG, failed to inform the principal, and failed to complete an Aspen report. It's important to note that all of these failures typically lead to the person being fired. It is also important to note that none of these four staff members was Abdul Muhammad. In fact, the Aspen report shows that the only time DCFS was called was when the fourth staff member informed Mr. Muhammad, who then directed that staff member to complete the Aspen report and call DCFS. Kelly Tarrant had to have read the Aspen report because it's the only thing documenting the harassment that she's saying Muhammad failed to report. Therefore, she had to have known the danger these staff members put that student in by failing to report the sexual misconduct the student alleged. Parent had to have known that the very report she was reading would not have existed if Abdul Muhammad had not instructed that fourth staff member to call DCFS and complete the report. Yet somehow, parent, under the supervision of Libby Massey and Ruti Verma, forwarded Muhammad's name to the OIG to be investigated for failure to report while giving at least three staff members who put that child in danger a pass, which allowed them to remain at Limbloom and fail that child again, and fail other children again, and again, and again. This is your law department. If the documented evidence shows that Muhammad was the only one who acted decisively to keep this student safe, then how did Kelly Tarrant, Libby Massey, and Ruchi Verma justify recommending the OIG investigate Abdul Muhammad? Well, Tarrant used the word of Limbloom clerk Lakonda McDaniel, who with no evidence whatsoever told Tarrant that Muhammad didn't report the accusation because the student wanted to be anonymous. Tarrant then ever elevated the word of this clerk over the documented Aspen report that clearly shows Muhammad did exactly what McDaniel said he didn't. Right now, I'm going to pause this part, please focus, and talk about other places in Kelly Tarrant's original investigative report, the one with the petty accusations, that contained obviously false claims from Laconda McDaniel that Tarrant took as fact so that we can see Terrence's pattern of using McDaniel to fabricate outlandish claims against Muhammad. Kelly Tarrant concluded in her investigative report that Muhammad completed a form for a vendor that he wasn't supposed to complete. One, petty, but let's go on. When Muhammad told investigators to check with the Office of Procurement so that they would know that procurement policy says that principals must complete this form, Kelly Tarrant decided that the clerk, Laconda McDaniel, was a higher authority than the Office of Procurement. 
So she fact checked Muhammad by checking back with the clerk, Laconda McDaniel. It's right there in her own investigative report. And McDaniel told Tarrant that she, the clerk, was supposed to complete the form in clear violation of procurement policy. But Tarrant privileged McDaniel's words over district policy. In another example, Tarrant's report says that Muhammad made odd or strange pur purchases for a pep rally. Listen to this. These so-called strange purchases included balloons and a DJ for a pep rally. And who is the authority that Kelly Tarrant relied on to fact check whether or not balloons and the DJ were odd purchases for a pep rally? Anybody care to guess? The school clerk, Laconda McDaniel. Another claim fabricated by Laconda McDaniel from the pep rally was that one of the entertainers Muhammad invited, to, invited told students to follow her on Cash App. Once again, petty, as if he can control what this person is saying. But let's go on. Standing in contradiction to McDaniel is the evidence. One, the pep rally was videotaped and at no point in the tape did anyone say this. Two, multiple witnesses verified it, but the law department wouldn't interview them, including the person they claim said it, the vendor. And three, anyone who makes the slightest effort to investigate that claim knows that you cannot follow someone on Cash App. It's not a social media app. Despite the fact that the evidence contradicts McDaniel and McDaniel herself, herself provided no evidence to support her claim, Tarrant once again with, with McDaniel's word against Muhammad over the evidence supporting Muhammad. Her word over evidence again and again and again. Many of you are aware that one of Tarrant's star witnesses against Abdul Muhammad is Christina Davis who admitted in an email that she put school fundraising money in her personal bank account and had no intention of returning it. What may have escaped you is that Christina Davis could not have stolen that money without the school clerk, Laconda McDaniel, turning a blind eye when Davis failed to turn in fundraising reports. Follow me. As many of you also know, there is documented there's a documented record that Mr. Muhammad discovered this theft and put in systems and structures to stop it, thereby giving Laconda McDaniel a motive to lie to investigators about Muhammad. This is the record of Laconda McDaniel. Of the more than 80 verifiably false statements in Terrence's report, McDaniel told the most lies. Since McDaniel had proven herself to be so reliable in saying whatever Terrence needed her to say to back up the petty charges, Tarrant turned to her again when she needed someone to contradict the written record on the serious charge. The record shows that Muhammad was the only person who followed the district's sexual misconduct reporting requirements, but Tarrant needed someone to say he didn't. Again, record shows he did. Tarrant needed a word that he did. Not evidence, just a word. And in an unbelievable twist, it was particularly monstrous of Tarrant to use Laconda McDaniel's accusation against Principal Bahamut because the Aspen report clearly shows that one of the three people the student went to with the sexual misconduct allegation was guess who? Laconda McDaniel. It's right there in the report. They didn't even interview the student. Yet Laconda McDaniel did not call DCFS, did not call the OIG, did not complete an Aspen report, and did not inform the principal. This is the person that Kelly Tarrant used to fabricate a claim that Muhammad failed to report. You can't make this up. Limbloom teacher Danielle Atta is also one of the four staff members listed in the Aspen report as having been told directly by the student of the sexual harassment. Yet Atta too failed to call DCFS, failed to call the OIG, failed to complete an Aspen report and failed to inform the principal. Danielle Atta, the one who failed to report is also one of the seven white teachers that Kelly Tarrant relied on to make multiple verifiably false claims against Principal Muhammad. It is right there in the report. Again, you just cannot make this up. It's as if Tarrant was mocking Mr. Muhammad, mocking the very concepts of justice and student safety, 
and mocking you. If you do not act, Daniel Atta and Laconda McDaniel, who fabricated claims and endangered a victim of sexual misconduct, will be at Limbloom this fall to endanger those students again. And Abdul Muhammad, the man who insisted those staff members follow student safety protocols, will not be there to protect them. Abdul Muhammad, of course, is not the only victim of Kelly Tarrant and her supervisors, Libby Massey and Ruchi Verma. Dr. Kimberly Gibson and Principal Gerald Murrow were also victimized. Gerald Murrow was removed in December and nearly eight months later, Tarrant still hasn't told him what he's charged with beyond some vague mismanagement allegation. That's it, eight months and that's all he's gotten. Brittany Griner got more due process from Russia under Vladimir Putin than Gerald Murrow got from CPS under Pedro Martinez. And that's not hyperbole. You can measure that. What is due process? Well, you know what you're charged with. Do we know what Brittany Griner was charged with? Yes, we do. Drug possession, marijuana, right? Which she knows. Do we know what Gerald Murrow's charged with? Gerald Murrow doesn't even know what Gerald Murrow is charged with. Based on what we've seen with Muhammad and Gibson, in all likelihood, she hasn't released the report because the accusations are provably false petty and she's still looking for something to pin on him. Last page. In response to our accusations of discrimination, CPS released a statement saying that over 40% of principals are black. They forgot to mention that CPS management doesn't select most principals. Local school councils are the ones that selected most of those black principals and then management and the law department come in to fire those black principals selected by those local school councils. And when the LSCs resist, hold up, they opened up investigations against the black LSC members. As a matter of fact, the Dunbar local school council is so supportive of Daryl Murrow that Tarrant opened up investigations against them for financial claims that are supposed to be handled by the OIG. In addition to her investigation of the Dunbar Local School Council, guess who else Tarrant is investigating? Lynn White, the Black Lynn Bloom LSC member who is, the most, who is the most vocal supporter of Abdul Muhammad. You cannot make this up. But Kelly Tarrant has thus far been able to make up anything she wants and get away with it. Tarrant, of course, is not acting alone. Staff from the Office of Network Supports and the Office of LSC Relations were also directly involved in front of witnesses in sabotaging Muhammad while he was applying for the job at Limbloom, which means someone used law, someone used network support, someone used LSC relations in a coordinated attack on Muhammad. There's also evidence of coordinated attacks at Dunbar and Tubman. The only person who has the authority to direct all three of those departments is the CEO, Pedro Martinez. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to investigate. Specifically, I'm asking you to contract an independent firm to investigate the departments and the systems that disproportionately targeted and persecuted Black principals and suspend all board employees implicated pending the results of this investigation. And those suspensions should include the CEO, Pedro Martinez. That's right. If something like this happened under a principal's watch, they would, you all wouldn't let them sit in that office another day. Right. Lastly, excuse me. I'm asking you to return Abdul Muhammad, Gerald Murrow, Kimberly Gibson, and all principals who were discriminated against and persecuted by CPS officials to their rightful positions and issue a public apology to the principals and their school communities. Apologize to the children for what you did to their schools when you took out their leaders. Lastly, I'm asking you to join with us to be an ally in calling for investigations and actions from the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division the state legislature and the Illinois Human Rights Commission and the Illinois State Board of Education. Now that, uh, something occurred to me on the way here after we wrote this statement. Take another 60 seconds. There's a commonality between these black principals who were targeted. It struck me. One of them is a black principal over a majority white school. 
The other is a black principal over majority Latino school. All of the other four lead schools in gentrifying communities. They didn't touch the deep south side. They didn't touch the southwest side. All of them are leading schools in gentrifying communities. So this goes way beyond Kelly Tarrant and the law department. They are just tools. Right? When you see an orchestra playing together, there must be a conductor. Right? And these different departments are all playing together to target black principles to destroy black communities. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to investigate. Are there any questions? Thank you.